One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. On July 20th, 1969, Neil Armstrong put his left foot on the moon and made history. Or did he? That's where it all began, from the very first little step. The never-ending debate whether this was a hoax or it was truly a man strolling on the moon for the first time in the history of mankind. Many questions arose, but one recent question really outshone the others since observant internet users notice that some facts don't match up. But if there's a question, there's an answer. So before we take off on this interstellar journey, subscribe to our channel and hit that bell button so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. Everything started from the first step, literally. As Neil Armstrong stepped his left foot onto the surface of the moon, the trouble began. It was the first footprint, or the first proof that everything was a hoax. The never-resting conspiracy theorists have presented a new theory, suggesting that Neil Armstrong didn't even wear the boots required to take that step, because the footprint doesn't match the shoe. To support the claim, conspiracy theorists started comparing a photo of Neil Armstrong's Apollo 11 spacesuit with a shot from the mission itself. While Neil Armstrong and the other crew members did wear the Apollo Skylab A7L suit, they had more gear. Namely, overshoes with treaded soles. And according to NASA, the footprint in the photograph isn't even Armstrong's. It belongs to Buzz Aldrin. The overshoes provided extra protection from rips, tears, and dust for the basic spacesuits. They left distinctive footprints that can be seen in numerous other images from the mission. NASA said that, The first footprints on the moon will be there for a million years. There is no wind to blow them away. The next question we need to address is why the overshoes aren't at a museum, like the rest of Armstrong's gear. The reality is that the Apollo 11 crew left behind about 100 items on the moon as a weight-saving measure. The list included not only TV lenses and bodily fluids, but the infamous shoes as well. The amount of attention that is given to this alleged hoax is underwhelming for all the Apollo 11 crew, but especially to the memory of Neil Armstrong himself, since he once claimed the biggest accomplishment of the mission was not taking the steps, but landing the lunar module. Pilots take no special joy in walking. Pilots like flying. He said, Pilots generally take pride in a good landing, not in getting out of the vehicle. That's it. One more attempt to belittle humanity's greatest achievement debunked. Or is it? Obviously, in the age of information, there will always be someone who has doubts. But happily, the fact that astronauts actually stepped foot on the moon can be checked. Or, to be more precise, can be seen. A piece of NASA's robotic spacecraft, the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, which was launched back in 2009, captured new, sharper views of the Moon. Here, we can actually see various technology pieces, and even the footpaths left by the astronauts that remain on the Moon to this day, together with the damn shoes, which are somewhere out there waiting for their Cinderella. Thankfully, we can close the case. Or can we? Apparently not so easily. So, if it were faked, it had to be faked really well. Who could have been capable of doing something so grandiose? Well, as it happened, there was someone who was able to do exactly that. The man, the myth, the legend, the notorious perfectionist movie director, Stanley Kubrick. The director of such movies as The Shining, Clockwork Orange, Dr. Strangelove, 2001 A Space Odyssey, and, allegedly, The Moon Landing. Not only did he help to stage it, he left many obscure hints of confession about this endeavor. Allegedly, when he was approached by U.S. government officials, Kubrick initially turned down the offer. Yet, after some sweet talk, he agreed. Kubrick's colossal space epic, 2001 A Space Odyssey, 
had been made and released just one year earlier, back in 1968. During the production of this movie, Kubrick cooperated closely with engineers from NASA to ensure that the movie would be as close to reality as possible. He even used NASA's moon surface maps in order to recreate the moon in the movie. That's what made him qualified enough to fake the moon landing footage. But after taking a closer look, conspiracy theorists managed to see many similarities between the movie and the actual footage from the moon. So the allegations started. It was just too uncanny. But that's not all. After the hoax was completed, Kubrick, according to the theorists, decided to let people know about his involvement in the greatest fraud ever, and therefore left many subliminal hints in his 1980 movie, The Shining. For conspiracy theorists, this particular scene speaks volumes. The main character, a boy named Danny, is playing on a carpet of a very particular pattern design, which reminds us just too much of the launch pad of Apollo 11. Danny wears an Apollo 11 sweater, and when he stands up, this symbolizes Apollo 11 taking off. In another scene, another subliminal message is found. Right here, tang cans can be seen in the background. The powdered fruit drink can be seen as just a movie prop, or something more serious, since tang was also something that was used by NASA crews. And that's not all. The Shining was based on a novel written by Stephen King. But there is one detail that Kubrick changed about the book. There's a mysterious room 217 in the novel, where lots of obscure things happen. But in the movie, Kubrick changed it to 237. Why? Danny, while wearing the Apollo 11 sweater, enters room 237. And 237 is symbolic because, according to the conspiracy theorists, the distance from Earth to the Moon is approximately 237,000 miles away. Or is it? Oh, okay. Could Kubrick have left a mistake like this one? Keep in mind that he is the guy who was an obsessive perfectionist, who required everything done perfectly. The last and strongest piece of evidence for conspiracy theorists is a bit different. Apparently, back in May 1999, an unknown director managed to secure an exclusive interview with Stanley Kubrick, and this interview resurfaced on the internet back in 2015. Here, Kubrick confesses his role in staging the moon landing. That's pretty impressive. But you know what's even more impressive? That this interview was taken two months after Kubrick had already passed away. So, criticism followed. Stanley Kubrick was famously reclusive, Yet, someone managed to get a full interview with him? And also, his appearance and his voice in the interview differed from his real voice and appearance. The man just sounds and looks different. And, uh, my, upcoming, my upcoming film, Eyes Wide Shut, is all about secrecy. To receive this great honor of the D.W. Griffith Award. But I'm in London making Eyes Wide Shut Naturally, this interview was called fake, not only by NASA, but by Kubrick's widow Christiane and his daughter Vivian as well, who fiercely defended his legacy by calling such allegations a grotesque lie. How can anyone believe that one of the greatest defenders of mankind would commit such an act of betrayal? She asked. Therefore, if Kubrick was really hired to fake the moon landing, his perfectionism made them film it on the actual moon. But as time ticked away, new otherworldly theories appeared, and some of them seemed to require a wider imagination than Stanley Kubrick had. Believing that the moon landing was simply staged is beginner's level. Some of them go like this. The moon is translucent, and landing on it is impossible, not only because of technological and financial reasons. The moon is, in fact, a spaceship, an artificial shell that is actually inhabited. Yep, that's a thing. The moon landing is not fake. Instead, the first moon landing was achieved not by Apollo 11, but by the Nazis. Yeah, you heard that right. According to this theory, Nazis successfully landed on the moon 27 years before Apollo 11. There's also a theory that not only the moon landing, 
but space itself is fake. So, when we encounter cases like a disbelief in the lunar landing, or denying space is real, and thinking that Mars is not a planet, but a snack bar. The allure to dismiss these theories as irrelevant tinfoil hat wearers is strong. But what motivates them, and where do they all come from? According to researchers, it all comes from the same reason which helped humans to thrive as a species, the logical desire to make sense of the world to assign meaning to the unknown. Conspiracy theorists are concerned about society and its future, and they're trying to enlighten people in their own ways. Even though it requires audacity to deny facts without having any scientific background. So that's where this illogical desire comes from. Therefore, not only facts, but also patience is required if you want to change the mind of a conspiracy theorist. But some people will never give up their ideas and continue believing in their own private facts. So, to conclude everything on a positive note, let's finish with a Neil deGrasse Tyson quote. What a compliment it is that there are members of our society that are so impressed with what we've achieved, they can't believe it. If you enjoyed this video, press those subscribe, notification, and like buttons to make it easier for us to make more awesome videos for you in the future so we can continue fighting boredom together.